and you still have to maintain a professional um, profile in front, of, in front of your staff, but what millennials are looking for is they, they don't believe that the boss is the almighty know-it-all that we probably used to. You know, the, it's, it's a respect not because you own the place, I have to respect you, no. I'll respect you if you respect me, and you have to gain my respect just like I have to gain your respect, right? So it's almost a mutual thing. It's, a, it's more on a separate peer level. So they want to make sure, they want to reach out, they want to connect, right? So I get the question a lot, you know, my employees want to, you know, friend me on Facebook, should I let them? And I said, well, do you have anything to be embarrassed about that you post on Facebook? You know, if you're running around doing weird things on the weekends, probably not. <laughs> but if you live a normal, healthy, happy life, and you do what normal, healthy, happy, productive human beings do, then connect with them, right? right? So it's really a call that you can make, but, but don't be surprised if they want to connect with you in different ways outside of the office. And they, they really strive for accomplishment. They want to achieve things. They want to be able to know that there is a project at hand. What do I need to do? I want to achieve that plan and that, that goal, and then I want to move to something else. Right? So they're very goal-oriented. They're very uh, project-oriented. Accomplishment is important. They, they also want to be recognized for their accomplishments as well. And then the last one, which we talked about a little bit, is, is involvement. They want to be involved. Okay, So we have all these things called uh, uh, what is it, the uh, peers groups and brain tanks and what are some of the think other things? Tank. Think tanks and all these, other, right. People understand now that if you want to achieve something, you want to figure something out, you're going to be able to achieve it much better working as a team. Get them involved, right? If there's an issue, if there's a problem, get them involved. If you secured a big new client, celebrate those wins, right? Get them involved, good or bad, people want to know. They want to help you with whatever is going on in your business. All right, so a couple, couple tips, we call them keys here, but a couple tips to working in, working on your culture and on your company in today's age. So I had the pleasure of visiting Zappos corporate uh, office, which is in Las Vegas. Um, it just so happens that the Action Coach corporate office is in Las Vegas, and we took a field trip over to Zappos. Has anybody ever been to the Zappos? <coughs> so it is a weird, to me, it's a weird place, but Zappos is one of the best, most successful companies in history, right? And part of their secret to success is they have a very unique <coughs> culture. Now, I'll, I'll give you just a little taste of it, right? So I walk into Zappos, and there's, you know, it kind of looks like a regular office, so to speak. There's a bunch of ties, so you, nobody wears a tie in the place. So if you walk in and you have a tie, they make you take it off and you staple it on the wall, so there's a wall filled with ties, right? <laughs> and there's all these weird things up on the walls, and there's a, a, a you know one lady at the receptionist stand and you know she greeted us and she said okay he'll be right with you please have a seat so we're looking around and all the weird stuff on the table there's a big red button that says do not push oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, right? hold on don't spoil it for everyone. so there's a big red button and, and like I'm there I'm looking at it and I'm like what is this do not push there's like two of us just standing there look somebody's like oh what's this boom as soon as you press this big red button the lights go down, uh, uh, what do you call it, a Chris, uh, disco ball comes down, the music starts blaring, the girl jumps up on top of the desk and starts dancing on top of the desk for like 30 seconds, and then it goes back to normal, she sits back down, hi, Zappos, how can I help you? Weirdest thing, right? You go inside, they have people on roller skates, they have people with orange hair, the CEO, Tony, whatever his last name is, right? The CEO of Zappos sits with everybody else in a cubicle in the center. No big corner office, okay? Everybody, and like, oh look, there's Tony. I'm like, Tony, the CEO? Yeah, like, hey, that's where he sits. He sits right there. Weird, weird. I know I couldn't fit in there because I don't have the purple hair. I don't know how to roller skate, right? But that can works for them. I can dance. <laughs> but that works for them. That works for them. So here's the thing. You have to have a culture in your organization. You already do, whether you know it or not. And here's the thing, if you don't make a deliberate effort to create your own culture, guess who will? Your staff. And you may not like it. So instead of allowing it to let it be what it be, no. Take deliberate actions to, to think about what type of culture do I want to create, because if not, you might not be happy with what you end up with. Okay. So, so Zappos is all about culture, balance, fun, big picture, big purpose, huge, huge. They've, they've written a few books, Tony's written a few books, great books. 
Number two, technology is like breathing for millennials, right? So they grew up with the internet. Um, they grew up with smartphones and technology and tablets and all of that, right? So whereas some of us older ones in the room might have thought that, you know, a fax machine was like the last improvement, the latest and greatest, you know, and computers were never going to catch on, you know, this is a generation opposite to that that was born and raised on technology, right? So the point with that is, is don't restrict them of it. Give it to them. Let them utilize it. Let them leverage it. Because if they know it better than we do, then let them use that talent, right? Because there's other things that we're good at. We're, we're a little better at communicating with people, right? We're better at the old handshake, right? We know that a friend, to truly have a friend, is somebody that you actually see, not something that social media says is your friend, right? Mm -hmm. So we're a little better, better about the human connection, but they're better <laughs> at technology. So let them embrace it. Number three is show them a future with you, which we've talked about. Show them the, the opportunity for advancement and growth within your company. Number four, give them feedback all the time. They've been trained for it. Give them a mentor. Give them coaching. Ask for input and ideas. Right? So it's a completely different mindset from the past. Right? So don't wait a whole year to tell somebody, somebody that they're not doing something well. Give them feedback and coaching throughout the year. Assign a mentor or coach for them and get them involved. Ask them for their input. Number five is stop equating hours with output. So that's a big one. Right? Because if you were brought up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was all about you know, clocking in how many hours did you work and I'm going to pay you for the hours that you worked. Right? Nowadays, it's you pay for the output, for what they produce. So like I said, if you pay for a project, do you really care if it took that person an hour or you know, 15 hours to put together as long as you're happy with the output that they created? You know, this was one of these things. When I was with Ritz Carlton, I was a little different. I was one of the younger guys right, at, at managing a 25 staff uh, sales and marketing department and I didn't always agree with with other leaders because they're like where's your sales team and I'm like I let them all go it's Friday it's three o'clock and they're like why and I'm like they all hit their numbers they exceeded expectations I, I told them to go have a drink and I'm gonna go meet up with them at five o'clock and they're like oh, but they're supposed to be here because they have to work 50 hours this week so you know there was still a lot of that old way of thinking of they have to and I'm like what if a salesperson is not selling you know what they are they're a paperweight yeah. mm -hmm. so if they're not selling go out in the bar and celebrate your success and come back in here on Monday and do it all over again right so my way of thinking was a little advanced at the time which got me in trouble but I, I knew that eventually that's the way that the world was going to go to. It's really focusing on the output, not the effort put into it. Um, oftentimes, you know, I, I, would, I would say to people, I'm like, look, there was always employees who struggled to make their numbers, and they would and they would always make it a point to say, so hey, boss, so you know, I, I was here on Saturday and I was here on Sunday, and I'm putting in like 60 hours, and then I would look at their numbers. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't hit your numbers. And I'm like, John, on the other hand, he works three days a week and he's blowing he's blowing his numbers out of the water. I'm like. Go hang out with John, figure out what he's doing. Don't impress me with how many hours you're working, impress me with what you're achieving in the hours that you're working. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Number six, don't friend them, lead them. Okay, so you wanna use things like clear language, do this, think about that, be very specific with your languaging. Um, here are some steps uh, versus figure it out. Right, so you wanna walk them through the process, demonstrate how they fit into the big picture, and be a leader, not a friend, right? So. You can, there's different definitions of a friend, right? Um, you don't need to get drunk with your employees, but is it okay to be connected on Facebook? Sure, right? Uh, is it okay to have a celebratory drink if you guys uh, exceed your expectations in numbers? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, never forget that you are the role model, okay? Employees are just like children. Children are a mirror reflection of whom? Parents. The parents. And so employees are a mirror reflection of who? The boss. The boss, right? So, I, you know, I get called into companies quite a bit, and, and I hear this, and I say, well, what, you know, I ask them, well, so what's your issue? Uh, my employees are a bunch of knuckleheads. Uh, really? Okay, so who, who hired these knuckleheads? I did. Who trained them? I did. Who manages them? I did. So who's the real knucklehead? <laughs> I guess me. Yeah, exactly. So, listen, it's just like pets. Pets are the same way. Don't blame, blame the pet. Blame the owner, <laughs> right? So let's lead them. Let's create the team. And let's set the example because they're going to follow. If you're late, don't talk about punctuality. If you're not meeting your own expectations, don't try to hold other people accountable. You've got to step up first. All right.
We talked about a lot. I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to drink water. Top EFOs, look through your notes. I'm going, to, I'm going to be asking around what was the one thing that you liked best from what I've talked mm -hmm. about so far. So take two minutes to do that.